I'm Juanito G. Calvara Jr. Today, let me discuss to you what is reproductive system, specifically the male reproductive system. Let's start. Um, let us begin first by simply knowing what is a reproductive system, specifically the male reproductive system. Um, the male reproductive system is like of the female consists of those organs whose function is to produce a new individual, for example, to accomplish reproduction. This system consists of a pair of testes and a network of excretory ducts and ejaculatory ducts. Um, next, let's talk about the major function of the reproductive system. Um, the major function of the reproductive system is to ensure survival of the species. Other systems in the body, such as the endocrine and urinary system, work continuously to maintain homeostasis for survival of the individual. An individual may live a long, healthy, and happy life without producing offspring. But if the species is to continue, at least some individuals must produce offspring. Um, within the context of producing offspring, the reproductive system has four functions. First is to produce egg and sperm cells. Next, to produce and sustain these cells. Next, to nurture the developing offspring. And lastly, to produce hormone. Um, these functions are divided between the primary and secondary or accessory reproductive organs. The primary reproductive organs, or the gonads, consist of ovaries and testes. These organs are responsible for producing the egg and sperm cells. These hormones function in the maturation of the reproductive system, the development of sexual characteristics, and regulation of the normal physiology of the reproductive system. All other organs, ducts, and glands in the reproductive system are considered secondary or accessory reproductive organs. These structures transport and sustain the gametes and nurture the developing offspring. Um, next, let's proceed to the testes. On the male gonads, testes or testicles begin their development high in the abdominal cavity near the kidneys. During the last two months before birth or shortly after birth, they descend through the inguinal canal into the scrotum, a pouch that extends below the abdomen posterior to the penis. Although this location of the testes outside the abdominal cavity may seem to make them vulnerable to injury, it provides a temperature about 300 degrees Celsius below normal body temperature. This lower temperature is necessary for the production of viable sperm. The scrotum consists of skin and subcutaneous tissue. A vertical septum or a partition of a subcutaneous tissue in the center divides into two parts, each containing one testis. Smooth muscle fibers called the dartus muscle in the subcutaneous tissue contract to give the scrotum the wrinkled appearance. When these fibers are relaxed, the scrotum is smooth. Another muscle, the chemistry muscle, consists of a skeletal muscle, fibers, and controls the position of the scrotum and testes. When it is cold or a man is sexually aroused, this muscle contracts to pull the testes closer to the body for warmth. And now let's talk about the structure of it. Um, each testis is an oval structure about 5 cm long and 3 cm in diameter. It has white fibrous connected tissue capsule, the tonica albogena, surrounds each testis and extends inward to form septa that partition the organ into lobules. There are about 250 lobules in each testis. Each lobule contains one to four highly coiled seminiferous tubules that converge to form a single straight tubule. 
And let us proceed to spermatogenesis. Sperm are produced by a spermatogenesis within the seminiferous tubules. A transverse section of a seminiferous tubule shows that it is packed with cells in various stages of development. Interpierced with these cells, there are large cells that extend from the periphery of the tubule to the lumen. These large cells are the supporting or the sustentacular cells, which support and nourish the cells. Early in the embryonic development, primordial germ cells enter the testis and differentiate into spermatogonia, immature cells that remain dormant until puberty. Spermatogonia are diploid cells, each with 46 chromosomes, to 23 pairs located around the periphery of the seminiferous tubules. At puberty, hormones stimulate these cells to begin dividing by mitosis. Some of the dar cells produced by mitosis remain at the periphery as a spermatogonia. Others are pushed toward the lumen, undergo some changes, and become primary spermatocytes. Because they are produced by mitosis, primary spermatocytes like spermatogonia are diploid and have 46 chromosomes. Each primary spermatocyte goes through the first meiotic division, meiosis 1, to produce two secondary spermatocytes, each with 23 chromosomes just prior to this division, the genetic material is replicated so that each chromosome consists of two strands called chromatids that are joined by centromere. During meiosis 1, one chromosome consisting of two chromatids goes to each secondary spermatocyte. In the second meiotic division, meiosis 2, each secondary spermatocyte divides to produce two spermatids. There is no replication of genetic material in this division, but the centromere divides so that a single stranded chromatid goes to each cell. As a result of the two meiotic divisions, each primary spermatocyte produces four spermatids. During spermatogenesis, there are two cellular divisions but only one replication of DNA so that each spermatid has 23 chromosomes. One from each pair in the original primary spermatocytes, each successive stage in the spermatogenesis is pushed toward the center of the tubule so that the more immature cells are at the periphery and the more differentiated cells are nearer the center. Spermatogenesis differs from mitosis because the resulting cells have only half the number of chromosomes as the original cell. When the sperm cell nucleus unites with an egg cell nucleus, the full num number of chromosomes is restored. If sperm and egg cells were produced by mitosis, then each successive generation would have twice the number of chromosomes as the preceding one. The final step in the development of sperm is called spermiogenesis. In this process, the spermatids formed from spermatogenesis become mature. Spermatozoa or sperm, the mature sperm cell has a head, mid-piece and tall. The head, also called the nuclear region, contains the 23 chromosomes surrounded by a nuclear membrane. The tip of the head is covered by an actosome, which contains enzymes that help the sperm penetrate the female gamete. The midpiece, or the metabolic region, contains mitochondria that provide adenosine, triphosphate or ETP, the tall or locomotor region uses a typical flagellum for locomotion. 
the sperm are released into the lumen of the seminiferous tubule and leave the testes. They then enter the epididymis where they undergo their final maturation and become capable of fertilizing a female gamete. Sperm production begins at puberty and continues throughout the life of a male. The entire process, beginning with the primary spermatocytes, takes about 74 days after ejaculation. The sperm can live for about 48 hours in the female productive tract. And now let's talk about the duct system. Sperm cells pass through a series of ducts to reach the outside of the body. After they leave the testes, the sperm passes through the epididymis, ductus deferens, ejaculatory duct, and urethra. Next is the epididymis. Sperm leave the testes through a series of efferent ducts that enter the epididymis. Each epididymis is a long, about 6 meters, tube that is tightly coiled to form a coma-shaped organ located along the superior and posterior margins of the testes. When the sperm leave the testes, they are immature and incapable of fertilizing ova. They complete their maturation process and become fertile as they move through the epididymis. Mature sperm are stored in the lower portion or tail of the epididymis. And next, let's talk about the ductus difference. The ductus difference, also called vas difference, is a fibromuscular tube that is continuous with the epididymis. It begins at the bottom of the epididymis then turns sharply upward along the posterior margin of the testes. The ductus difference enters the abdomen and pelvic cavity through the inguinal canal and passes along the lateral pelvic wall. It crosses over the ureter and posterior portion of the urinary bladder and then descends along the posterior wall of the bladder toward the prostate gland. Just before it reaches the prostate gland, each ductus difference enlarges to form an ampullia. Sperm are stored in the proximal portion of the ducts difference. Near the epididymis and the peristatic movements propel the sperm through the tube. The proximal portion of the ductus difference is a component of the spermatic cord, which contains vascular and neural structures that supply the testes. The spermatic cord contains the ductus difference, the stacular artery and veins, lymph vessels, Testacular nerve cremaster muscle that elevates the testes for warmth and at times of sexual stimulation and a connective tissue covering. Now let's proceed to ejaculatory duct. Each ductus difference at the ampullia joins the duct from the adjacent seminal vesicle, one of the accessory glands. To form a short ejaculatory duct, each ejaculatory duct passes through the uh, prostate gland and empties into the urethra. urethra. The urethra extends from the urinary bladder to the external urethral orifice at the tip of the penis. It is a passageway for sperm and fluids from the reproductive system and urine from the urinary system. While reproductive fluids are passing through the urethra, sphincters contract tightly to keep urine from entering the urethra. The Accessory Glands the accessory glands of the male reproductive system are the seminal vesicles, prostate gland, and the bulbifer glands. These glands secrete fluids that enter the urethra. The seminal vesicles. 
The paired seminal vesicles are succular glands posterior to the urinary bladder. Each gland has a short duct that joins with the ductus deferens at the ampullia to form an ejaculatory duct, which then empties into the urethra. The fluid from the seminal vesicles is viscous and contains fractus, which provides an energy source for the sperm. Prostaglandins, which contribute to the mobility and viability of the sperm, and proteins that cause slight coagulation reactions in the semen after ejaculation. Prostate The prostate gland is a firm, dense structure that is located just inferior to the urinary bladder. It is about the size of a walnut and encircles the urethra as it leaves the urinary bladder. Numerous short ducts from the substance of the prostate gland empty into the prostatic urethra. The secretions of the prostate are thin, milky colored, and alkaline. They function to enhance the motility of the sperm. Bulbourethral glands The paired bulbourethral glands are small, about the size of a pea, and located near the base of the penis. A short duct from each gland enters the proximal end of the penile urethra. In response to the sexual stimulation, the bulbourethral glands secrete an alkaline mucus-like fluid. This fluid neutralizes the acidity of the urine residue in the urethra helps to neutralize the acidity of the vagina, and provides some lubrication for the tip of the penis during intercourse. Seminal fluid Seminal fluid or semen is a slightly alkaline mixture of sperm cells and secretions from the accessory glands. Secretions from the seminal vesicles make up about 60% of the volume of the semen, with most of the remainder coming from the prostate gland. The sperm and secretions from the bulbourethral gland contribute only a small volume. The volume of semen in a single ejaculation may vary from 1.5 to 6.0 ml. There are usually between 50 to 150 million sperm per milliliter of semen. Sperm counts below 10 to 20 million per milliliter usually present fertility problems. Although only one sperm actually penetrates and fertilizes the ovum, it takes several million sperm in an ejaculation to ensure that fertilization will take place. The penis The penis, or the male copulatory organ, is a cylindrical pendant organ located anterior to the scrotum and functions to transfer sperm to the vagina. The penis consists of three columns of erectile tissue that are wrapped in connective tissue and covered with skin. The two dorsal columns are the corpora cavernosa. The single midline ventral column surrounds the urethra and is called the corpus spongiosum.